Merry Christmas, friends. We're here to celebrate God's appearance in the world as a baby. Now, some of us have perhaps been waiting patiently all day or all week long for this hour of worship. Others of, of us have surely been rushing around all day long. Somebody was probably wrapping presents today yet. I'm sure they were. And however your day has gone and your week has gone, I'm glad that you're here with us for this hour of worship. We believe it's not a mistake that you're here today, and we're glad that you're here with us. A special welcome to guests who are with us today and to those who are worshiping online with us in a very merry Christmas. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event with this group of people at this time and in this place, so let's be sure to cherish the time that we have together. As we worship Jesus Christ as our newborn Savior and Lord, may our hearts be filled with the love and the joy and the peace that Christ was born to give us. If you would please mark your presence with us in the welcome book and pass that down the row uh, that we may know of your presence with us here today. A special thanks to our musicians offering their gifts uh, for us. Uh, the music of tonight carries such a powerful message. Uh, so thanks to the praise team, uh, to Becca Polk and Sharon McGee for their gifts of music. In a moment, we will light all the candles on the Advent wreath, including the Christ candle in the center. Our season of Advent waiting is over, and now with unbridled joy, we celebrate Christ's appearance as a baby in the world. During the candle lighting that we have this evening at, toward the end of the service, uh, we'll invite you to light your own candle and encourage you, please, if you would, to tip the unlit candle. Say it with me. Tip the unlit candle. Now, you'll be happy about it. We'll be happy about it. It'll all work a lot better. Keep your lit candle upright. Tip the unlit candle. That would be great. Every week we gather for worship together, 5 p.m. on Saturdays, 9 a.m. on Sundays, and 9 a.m. online. You're always welcome to worship with us. This Sunday, uh, the 26th, will be a service of lessons and carols, and we'll read through uh, uh, seven scriptures uh, from the Bible about Christ's birth, and then sing seven, even more than that, wonderful carols. So join us on Sunday morning in the sanctuary or online as you're able. In the new year, my family invites you to join us in our home for a celebration. It's the annual uh, Polk Epiphany Open House. Uh, it's from 4 to 7 p.m. on Tuesday, January 4th. It's a great way to finish the holiday season together. We've got some great learning opportunities in the new year. A course on personal finance, Financial Peace University, uh, a group on managing anxiety, and uh, also a group on caring for and welcoming people with disabilities. Uh, all the details of those are in your uh, blue epistle or see your uh, St. John's email news on our, or our website for those details. Some fun things also in the new year, a Euchre night. Uh, sign up for that is in the back or call the church office. And we're going to have Soggy Prairie in concert with us in January. So I hope you can join us uh, as you're able for those events. Again, the Blue Epistle email news has all the details on these events, so you can connect with us in the new year. We will celebrate Holy Communion together this evening. At that time, come forward and open your hand to receive the bread. We also have gluten-free bread available, and then receive the cup of wine or juice before continuing back to your seat. An empty basket at the end of the front row is for your empty cup. All are welcome to participate with us. If you would rather, come forward and cross your arms to receive a blessing. If you're worshiping with us online, we invite you also to have a form of bread and wine or juice available for that holy meal. Our worship continues with an opportunity to be honest before God. Please rise for a time of confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the maker of heaven and earth, the word made flesh, the Lord and giver of life. Amen. Amen. Let us come into the light of Christ, confessing our need for God's mercy. God of peace, we confess, we confess that, that we are not at peace with, with others or with ourselves. ourselves. We, we bring, bring to you all that tears us apart discord in our families, violence in our world, our own conflicted hearts. In your mercy, mend us. Reconnect us to one another and to you. Let peace reign over all the earth through the Prince of Peace, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the Word made flesh, 
God has come to us and dwells with us. God has given us grace upon grace, forgiveness that is stronger than our sins, love that can heal every broken heart. Hear this word of God's pardon and peace. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, you are freed from all your sins. Rise, shine, for your light has come. Amen. Amen. We sing, O come, O faithful. Today, Christ is born. Glory to God. Glory Glory to to God God in in the the highest heaven heaven and peace peace on earth. earth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And also with you. The people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. Those Those who who dwelt dwelt in the land of deep darkness, darkness, on them light has shined. To us a child is born, to us a child is given, uh, sorry, son is given. We We have have seen seen Christ's glory, the glory glory as of a father's father's only son, full full of grace and truth. truth. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The The light light shines in the darkness, darkness, and the the darkness darkness has has not not overcome it. Let us join together in prayer. Almighty God, You You made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. The, re the rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden. And the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. You have broken as on the day of Midian. For the all the boots of the tramping warriors and the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh hear the angel voices, oh no, divine, oh night, when Christ was born, oh night, divine, oh night, oh night, divine. Led by the light of faith serenely beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand. So led by light of a star sweetly from the old. 
Excellent. Our New Testament reading is from the book of Titus, chapter 3. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the waters of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This spirit he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. 
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And suddenly an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What a joy it is to be celebrating the birth of Christ with you. At its core, Christmas is the celebration of God's arrival on earth to be with us. Christmas is so many things, isn't it? Christmas is peace and love. Christmas is singing and family. Christmas is amazing and wonderful, and, and Christmas is exhausting and busy, and Christmas is complicated and emotional, and Christmas can be messy. Oh, yes, let's be honest. Christmas is messy. Can you agree with me? Christmas is messy. Let's see. There's the mess of decorating. Nod your head if you're familiar. The mess of pine needles constantly dropping on the floor, whether it's from your fresh tree or your forever tree. The mess of untangling Christmas lights. The mess of decorations packaged in styrofoam and covered in glitter. Who invented glitter anyhow? The mess of Christmas ornaments captured and shredded by your dog. Does this happen to anyone else? Then there's the mess in the kitchen from all the baking and cooking. Who likes making a mess in the kitchen? Who likes cleaning up the mess in the kitchen? I think every cook and baker hopes that a kitchen angel will come and clean it all up. Not to mention the mess of hosting guests and sharing meals. And let's not forget the mess of opening presents. Gifts all over, wrapping paper and boxes tossed aside. I'm not trying to be a Grinch, but Christmas can be messy. I suppose that should be expected. After all, life is messy. Mess happens. You know how I mentioned ornaments shredded by the dog? Well, that's personal experience. 
This is my family's second Christmas with a dog. Marty the cockapoo makes a home with us, and he is a wonderful dog. In fact, he's a canine good citizen, folks. <laughs> Marty is the first pet of my life, and you pet lovers will be happy to know that even though I never wanted a pet, I have slowly become more of a dog person. Who has a dog or a cat or a pet? A lot of us. How about on the count of three, say your pet's name. One, two, three. Oh, good. And odds are you're better than I am at loving your pet. But if we're honest, pets are messy, right? I mean, who enjoys picking up after their dog on a walk? Or cleaning the litter box or the cage? No one does. Pets make a mess, and they sure aren't going to clean it up. So there you are, out on a walk in the freezing cold or the 50 degrees in December, waiting on your dog to finish their business so you can package it up and take it home with you. <sighs> Marty likes to chew on socks and paper and shred ornaments and drag his toys all over the house. Here's some of his handiwork. Took the head right off this poppet toy. Now, to his credit, he does a really nice job with pre-rinse of the dishes. <laughs> my parents got their first pet in my lifetime, about the same time that we got Marty. This is Maisie, the Cavapoo. Maisie is also a great dog, but she loves to dig. So she'll go out in the yard, do her business, leave her mess behind, and then she'll track in mud all over the house. <laughs> Pets are messy, and life is messy. It just is. We know that it is, and that can be hard. Life is messy, our world is messy, and our own hearts are messy. Sometimes things are very literally messy, like in Kentucky after the tornadoes. What a terrible, tragic mess. People are messy. Family relationships are messy for all of us. Healthcare and public life have been confusing and messy. Political life, social life, public life are complicated and messy. The church on earth is messy too, full of messy people and a checkered past. Our thoughts and emotions are messier than we care to admit. Our priorities get out of order and messed up. We want things to be easier, simpler, to be clearer. We all want peace and love and joy to cut through the mess. And it can. And it does. Thanks to God. Because life is messy, Christmas is messy. It always has been, even that first Christmas. Mary and Joseph experienced a series of unplanned, messy events, beginning with a surprise pregnancy. They lived in a messy political world under Roman occupation. The dynamics of greed and control and power sent them on a forced journey from their home at a vulnerable time in their lives. Mary and Joseph spent the final days of their pregnancy on a rather long and dusty road trip. Upon arrival, there was no place for them in the inn. The town was packed. So they stayed in a barn among messy animals. Mary's labor and delivery was surely a natural and messy event. They placed their newborn in a manger, a feed trough for animals. And unexpected, dirty guests arrived straight from the fields in the form of common shepherds. It was a mess. But God took care of them in the mess. God sent an angel to explain the surprise pregnancy. God guided them safely to Bethlehem. God provided a warm place for their family to labor and rest. God sent strangers to celebrate with them. God showed up right in the middle of all the mess. 
showed up in flesh and blood in a baby. God showed up in their mess, not to clean it all up and make their lives easy. God showed up in their mess to be with them, to be joy for them, to be love for them, to be peace for them. God traveled a great distance from heaven above to earth to personally meet them in their mess and in their need. A great distance. It just so happens that this Christmas, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope is scheduled to launch into orbit and travel a greater distance than any object ever before. Have you heard about this, the telescope? You can watch the launch, hopefully, tomorrow morning. It's the Christmas present that astronomers have been hoping for. The whole process has been complicated and, you guessed it, messy, dating back to 1990. It has been delayed time and time again over many years. The final cost totals $10 billion, but it's now ready. It sounds like a remarkable accomplishment of technology and includes a sun shield the size of a tennis court to keep the telescope cold. It will actually orbit the sun a million miles away from Earth. 30 years ago, we didn't know that this would be possible. It will see deeper into the realms of the universe than anything ever before. NASA says there are 344 points of possible failure for the telescope on its journey, just 344, and they've tried to anticipate everything. But once it's launched, that's it. The telescope is not coming back, and no one is able to travel to it to make repairs. There is no spaceship that can send astronauts to such a distance and bring them home safely. The distance is humanly insurmountable. The same might have been said about the distance from heaven to earth. That the distance and the gap between God and humankind was insurmountable. We might have thought that God was too holy and glorious and our world and our lives too messy and sinful. We might have thought that our God was far away and distant and always would be. But Christmas declares something different. Christmas is God going the distance. Christmas is God doing the seemingly impossible. Christmas is God coming nearer than ever before. Christmas is God showing up in person, in the middle of our mess. Not just to repair what is wrong, but to save us. And bring us home to God forever. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Who is the Messiah, the Lord. Jesus Christ is much more than a repairman. God traveled into our space, into our time, and into our mess to be our Savior. To be the Savior we all need. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Have you seen the movie? I hope so. It's a Christmas classic, a masterpiece by Frank Capra with Jimmy Stewart and Donna Reed. As the story goes, early in his life, George Bailey jumped into a frozen pond when his little brother Harry fell through the ice. We learned that George saved his brother's life that day. Years later, when George is up against a huge mess of problems and thinks about ending it all, Clarence, the angel, jumps into a river first to save George's life. And then George jumps into action to save Clarence from the water. 
In both cases, George Bailey plunged in to save someone else. Through Jesus' birth as a baby, our God plunged in to the mess of this world and the mess of our lives to save us, to save all of us. In Jesus Christ, God plunges in right in the middle of all our mess. God jumps into our mess, not to clean it all up, not to make our lives easy and simple. God shows up in our mess to be with us, to be peace for us, to be love for us, to be joy for us. Christmas is the beginning of Christ's journey, walking through the mess of this world, going to the tragic mess of the cross and through his horrible death to save us. Christmas is God showing up in the mess of the world to love us and save us. Christmas is God showing up in the mess of the world to love you and to save you. God came into the middle of our mess 2,000 years ago, born as a baby, and God comes to you and me still today, born in our hearts, living in us so that we might be peace, that we might be love, that we might be joy to one another. Christmas is God living and loving through human beings in all our mess to bring peace and love and joy to this weary, messy world. From the manger in the stable to the manger of your heart and mine, our Lord Jesus, God in the flesh, is near to you and me today and forever to love us and save us. Merry Christmas. Amen. invite you to rise and sing about that first manger that held our Lord Jesus. As a gathered community of God, let us profess our faith in, the, in this way. We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his, his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated? As the heavens and earth are filled with grace and peace of the word made flesh, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. O God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, through your birth as a baby, you personally jumped into the mess of our world to love us and save us forever. Our lives can be so messy and troubling, but you are the one we need the most. We depend on your love and care Draw us closer to you today and every day. Be born again and again in our hearts and grow in our souls so that we may truly love others. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We ask you in the quietness of this hour to help us rediscover the gifts of gentleness and love. Make us mindful of this special joy and believe it in something beyond ourselves. Give us the faith to expand our love to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. We long for a new world, O Lord, a world where your idea of mercy and love can be the center stage. Save us from ourselves. Teach us to alter behaviors that abuse, exploit, and harm others. Wherever there are hurting and broken hearts, heal the cracks and wounds with the warmth of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who experience loneliness and hardship this Christmas, for so many who feel distant from celebrations, for others grieving the absence of loved ones, for anyone waiting for some sign of joy, and for many who are sick and in search of healing. Help us to anguish with others, with others which live. Okay. Be for us a living hope that lightens our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. Bless us with a fresh commitment to ground our days in meeting and courage. Show us the difference between trivial living and Christ-inspirited living. Help us to discover the inexpressible joy that comes through loving you. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. We pray now in silence for all those who struggle in body, mind, and spirit. Comfort us all with your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be near us, Lord Jesus. We ask you to stay close by us forever and love us. We pray, bless all the dear children in your tender care and fit us for heaven to live with you there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 It's time for the children's message. My young friends, come on up. Let's meet together. 
Come on up. Oh, I'm glad you're here today. Oh, I don't have a noisy offering bucket, do I? Where is it? Hmm. Maybe some, maybe some lovely usher will go grab a noisy offering bucket for us. <clears throat> Cue usher. <laughs> Come on up, friends. Come on up. You're more prepared than I am. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here today. Let's talk a little bit about the Christmas story, huh? I've got a picture for us up on the screen. And let's try to remember who all was at the very first Christmas. Who was there? Who was there? You? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I like that. We, you are very important in the first Christmas. Absolutely. Because it's come for you today. Who was at that first Christmas? Um, Mary. Mary was there. Who else was there? Joseph was there. Who else was at the first Christmas? Do you remember? Animals were there. Who, who had the sheep? The shepherds were there. Who came down from heaven in the sky? The angels were there. Yeah, there, was, there were a lot of people there. There's the noisy offering bucket. There you go, my friends. There were a lot of people at that first Christmas. And right in the middle of everybody, who was in the middle of everybody? The baby, right? Who was the baby? Jesus. You got it. Jesus. And, and what did they put Jesus in? What did they put Jesus in for he, so he could take a nap? Right this. Right like a manger, right? It's kind of like that. A manger is where the, where, uh, the animals would feed. And they would get their lunch out of that. They, they put... Jesus on in the feed trough for the animals, in a manger. That's where Jesus was. Well, I want to think about Mary for just a moment. She's very important in the story. Very, very important. And, in, and Mary, she delivered Jesus, and they laid him in a manger, and something happened in Mary's heart. Did you catch that? The Bible talks about Mary's heart. Do you think, that she, do you think she was grumpy? You think she was like, oh, I'm so tired. Would everybody just get out of here? I need a nap. Not that, I don't think Mary. I don't think so. The Bible tells us that Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary's heart grew with love for Jesus. There was love born in Mary's heart. And that's what happens to us today, that the love of Jesus is born in us today. And we have a present for you, a gift for you, and it's in the shape of a heart to remind us that the love of Jesus is born in our hearts today. And on this heart, you can see Mary and Joseph, and you can see the manger, and you can see Jesus, that when Jesus was born, he was laid in a manger, and the whole thing is in the shape of a heart to remind you that Jesus was born for you, and Jesus is born in your heart today. Oh, my, my friends, before you get your ornament, will you share the peace of the Lord with me? Let's stand up and face out to our family and friends and put your arms out wide and say it with me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with your neighbor. And my friends, come and get your Christmas present. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. There you go. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And got one for Dan, for John, or Tom, yes. Merry Christmas. Yes. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Well, despite the challenges of 2021, St. John's had a wonderful and generous year of ministry. We continue to share the message of, of Jesus' love and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. The offering is one way that you can partner with us in doing God's work in the world. There are offering boxes at the doors to the sanctuary. You can also give online, by mail, and through the drop box on the front porch. In whatever way you give, I hope you give with joy and give as you feel blessed. And we'll receive now an offering of music from the praise team.
In thanksgiving for the gift of our lives, our offering shared, and the meal we are about to receive, let us pray. Good and, and loving God, we, we rejoice, rejoice in the, the birth of Jesus, Jesus who, who came, came among, among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let our offerings and our lives be blessings for others. With the trees of the field and with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. In the night you were betrayed, you took the bread. And the giving thanks you You took the cup. After giving thanks, you lifted it up. This is my blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my blood. So we thank you for the wine and the bread, for the length of life you gave and the blood you shed. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The meal whereby our Lord came into the mess of our life is prepared. Please come and receive. You may be seated and follow the direction of the ushers. Silence stars go by. 
Oh, dear.
And now may the eating and drinking of this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may this strengthen you and keep you in the true faith to life everlasting. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us, your Be grace with, with, with life, life and breath, and, and you give us bread for the journey. journey. Send, Send us out, out in service to this world that you love, telling an amazing news, and you're your coming to be the Savior and Lord of all. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine, and shine within your people here. bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Let's sing joy to the world.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Joy to the world. Sing. And heaven and nature sing.